All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And good afternoon, Sean. Thanks for uh, doing this as well. Jen, you want to uh, start us off? Absolutely. Sean, it has been a couple of months since you heard that you were going into the Ring of Honor. What is the memory or maybe the emotion that has bubbled up most often since then? Gosh, well, first of all, Jen, it's great to see you. It is really good to see everybody. Goodness gracious. Uh, you know, um, the uh, the first thought that comes to mind about this is, is, and I've shared it a couple of times, is when you go to a place, at least how I was when I first got to Alabama, the the desire to go be one of the guys that's the greatest um, in your in your team is is there. And then you start thinking about, well, gosh, how did I feel when I was watching highlights of Jim Zorn and Steve Largent? You know, and uh, it was the first thought I had of when it comes to Seahawk football. And will I, will I be willing to put myself mentally and emotionally and physically through what it takes to go be one of those guys, and uh, and to see all the work that you put in to go be great, um, to come out where people will put you in the ring of honor and be celebrated with the other greats. It's uh, it's it's humbling and it's exciting, and uh, and it brings back all the great memories of the guys I got to play with and uh, Cortez, of course, and he's already in it, and so you know to him to go in and while I was while I was playing and play with him and they see him go in, um, it has those kind of memories. I think of Ricky Waters, who's like the great the greatest big brother in the world, you know what I mean, and Max Strong, who was like, you know, um, you know, just a great friend and and all those memories of playing cards and sitting up and talking about how to be great and to turn our program into a championship program. Um, all those things come to mind and it's uh, it's pretty sweet. Corbin Smith. Hey, Sean, first off, congrats on getting into the ring of honor. This has been a long time coming and you were recently nominated again for the Hall of Fame class for 2023. And so my question for you, do you think that landing in the ring of honor and, and getting your name back out there a little bit, all the fans looking at your highlight reels and stuff like that, maybe will help bolster your candidacy a little bit to get into Canton? Uh, well, I hope so. You know, um, you know, it's it's, it's it was always different for me to to not think of myself as a Heisman or as a Hall of Fame guy um you know my closest friends in high school besides the kids you go with who was going on the trips was Charles Woodson and and Randy Moss <laughs> you know what I mean and so I was the best high school player in the country and I chose to go to Alabama and then I break all those records and I come to Seattle and I was just blessed with an amazing line an amazing fullback a really good um, run to run checking system and just busted my tail and we'd score a hundred touchdowns. And then to it not to be perceived as, as hall of fame worthy, it was, it was always been hard, you know, but I, I hope that this uh, gives me a shot at it because um, I know what I've done has been. Sean, are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you back now. You cut okay, out. Yeah. John Boyle. Yeah, Shauna, congrats again on this. Um, wanted to go back to 2005 in particular, just the way you were going that year, the whole offense was going. Just what are your memories of that particular season and just how maybe much fun you guys were having as an offense? Yeah, I'm a. Uh... I'm hearing you all, but it kind of cut out at the end. I, I heard um, 2005 season, John. Yeah, I I just that. yeah, just kind of your, what you remember that season, and just how how well everything was going on offense for you guys. Oh man, yeah, that year, um, <laughs> it was amazing. I feel like it was one of those moments where um, you feel like you're floating in the air. You know, what I mean, angels are carrying you. Um, it seemed like every play just worked. You know what I mean? And like, you know, you know, when you're in a zone in basketball, you're shooting threes and it just kind of makes sense. Oh, yeah, you better guard that guy. And football, it takes so many people for a running play to work and one or two guys mess up and it just doesn't. And even our our times where 
I was not be on. I'd miss the landmark. Um, you know, unbelievably, Walt would step the wrong way. And it would be like, he'd step the wrong way. I would overstep. Matt would st- over, Matt would c- break swing out wide. And it looked like the three of us planned it perfectly. And I'm running down the sideline for a touchdown that was supposed to be an inside run. That was an outside run. And they'd be like, what made y'all do that? And we'd all be like, <laughs> that's the kind of year we had. Like, even the times where, you know, the guys that don't mess up when it comes to landmarks or steps or feet even the plays we didn't do it right it turned out right on film it turned out right in the game and they would turn into great runs and and uh you know and it was it was just amazing max strong had an unbelievable year i mean he was breaking people off and it was it was uh it was just really wonderful um the whole way through magical is only thing i can really put it in the right word right frame of mind like it just even the plays that we thought were not going to work were working. And, uh, and when you get that, you know, you have gaudy numbers and gaudy, you know, gaudy record. We were, we were 13 and, uh, 13 and three, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, it was, it was just amazing. Masvida. Yeah. Hey, Sean, kind of an off the field question in all your career, you've always given back to the community and that's always been important. And I'm wondering if you could, Talk about what you're doing now in that uh, kind of in that realm. Yeah, you know, it was really, uh, really sweet while I was playing. My my heart was always family. So I wanted to help kids that were in my situations, raising single parents. Um, you know, my faith was always part. So I connected with FCA and sending kids all over the state uh, to mm-hmm. FCA camps. And and uh, and so um it is not, it has not changed. My, my heart is still to inspire and awaken people to be what God's created them to be and to use their gifts and talents to, to shape their families and their communities. And, um, and so it's been really cool. Uh, I've partnered with a group, uh, stand together, and we've been helping a lot of guys in NFL, um, learn how to, uh, use their platforms and use their names to go impact, uh, other communities and that, that fit them. And, and I just uh, I just finally put it on paper. I've been mentoring a lot of guys through the NFL through uh, the PLP program, which is how to master the five Fs, and that's uh, fame, how to handle fame. So it's it was a monster when I was playing. I it, it's harder for kids today. I mean, social you get kids to feel like they're superstars and they're like 15 years old. You're like really, you know. So how to handle fame? How to family? You know, um, what does it look like to be responsible and held accountable? You know, what's how to handle uh, uh, friendships, you know what I mean? What is a real friend and what does that look like? Are you one? And how to handle finances. And you already know the issues with finances. You know, the, the numbers are still staggering. How hundreds of thousands and millions can go through guys' hands and they're 28 and have nothing. And uh, and the future is, how do we plan the future? Once again, being a community influencer, what do you want your legacy to look like? So it's been wonderful uh, walking through those kind of uh, programs and walking guys through those stages. And, and it's kind of rolled into some business uh, people um, too. And, um, and so I, I'm, my cup is always full because I get to see the real, the real outcome that more than just the sport or more than just that moment um, I'm seeing people actually tag themselves into creating legacy. And, um, you know, and it's, it's a great honor to even be at a part of somebody's life that can ripple into somebody else's life. Thank you. Nico. Uh, yes, I shan't. Congratulations uh, to start off. Uh, I had two quick questions. The, the first one is, uh, you know, what do you feel like uh, was special, different about your style of running? I mean, you don't get the stats that you have without having something special in particular. And then the second one, uh, you know, you were successful at the high school level, college level, NFL. You know, what, what do you think the key was or, or what, what, what created that ability for you to just be able to be successful at every level? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> I think I had, uh, um, I was born with a pretty good vision. In other words, I could kind of see it happening before it happened. And, um, mm-hmm. and I, I have a, I have a, I have a deceptive speed, you know, I, I, y'all could clock me at a four, four or clock me at a four, five or clock me at a four, six, and you can't ever tell which one it is, you know, <laughs> you know? And so, so because of that, I could play, play with that. Um, I was always, uh, thinking a few a few steps ahead and so um i got really good at becoming a cutback runner which is if the play is called to the right i'm going to eventually get myself to the left and if the play is called to the left i'm going to eventually get myself to the right and the reason that i did that 
Um, I did a little bit in high school, a little bit more at Bama, and I kind of feel like how I learned how to master it pretty well at Bama. And then I took it to a whole nother level because Stump Mitchell was such a great coach about learning how to trust your feet and how to run a game plan, even from the running back position, that a lot of games we played, no one would run to the ball because they all thought I was cutting back. And so we'd run plays. They'd be like, man, look, he ran straight and no one moved. I'm like, well, y'all didn't see me cut back for the first four times I ran that play. So by the time we run in the third quarter, everybody's sitting still. We finally run blast to the left. Walt blocks his guy. Hutch blocks his guy. Everybody's backside sitting still. Matt, Matt gets a shoulder. I run down the sideline. Everyone's like, how did that work? I'm like, that's game planning. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so, so like a lot of that is just trying to master the craft. I had great coaches. Coach Hongren, you know, and and I love him for it. He he called the plays that he knew that I wanted to run, and he would call them over and over again. And he didn't have to do that. He could have been a coach that says, "I I throw the ball seventy times with Joe Montana. I do it with Brett Favre. I'm gonna do it with Hasselbeck." And he was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak my offense to go let you go be you." And uh, I was always thankful for that. Thank you, Brady. Hi, Sean. Uh, congrats again. Uh, I'm wondering if, as you watch the NFL, if there are any running backs or have been over the last decade or so that uh, whose style uh, reminds you of yourself? You know, uh, gosh, I, I just forgot his name. You just asked me a question because I think about it. I'm, I'm a bigger version of him, but I, 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 a lot of my style came from Tony Dorsett. And, uh, and then I got behind the blockers like Emmett. And so, and then I tried to be like Marcus Allen when it was the, 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 the positions of the game, third and what short goal line, you know? And so I remember, uh, Bell, uh, Bell, uh, with the Steelers. Le'Veon, Bell. Le'Veon, yeah, yeah. I forgot his first name. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so Le'Veon, he did a lot of that stuff well, and he was smaller, like Tony Dorsett. I was like, Oh, I know what you're doing, you know? Um, but today, the guys that produce it the way that I like, and they have a similar burst. Um, uh, I, I love Dalvin Cook. He has the same burst that I have, you know, that you can't tell it until it's too late. And he just explodes through stuff. You catch all the dink and dime passes. Um, and then uh, Nick Chubb, you know, love him uh, all the way around package, you know, and he's, of course, he's a stump Mitchell, disciple like I am, you know. And so, so those two guys to me, um, they they hold it together. They they play the game. I think that they can still run the offense through them. It's still a passing game now, but you can run the offense through those guys and and know that they can touch the ball enough to control the game and they do it well. Greg, hi Sean, good to see you again. For, for those of us who covered yeah, you, yeah, man, it's good to see you too. <laughs> it's been a it's been a bit. For those of us that covered you, we remember all you did off the field in the in the community here. What do you, when you look back at your time in Seattle, what are you most proud of of your legacy here and, and what you, how you left the city maybe differently than you found it when you arrived? Yeah, on the field, it it was that it's, it's just winning. Like, you know, I live out here in the DC area and, you know, go up to New York and do some business up there. And, and it's clearly understood. You're not going to really win in Seattle. And that was not the case when I got there. So on the field is there's this, the the 12s to the get in and get out with the win in Seattle. It's just going to be hard. And uh, and so I love that we changed the culture. Winning in general, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I think we'd had three division conferences, championships, you know, and it's sort of, you know, we win the four in a row and going to playoffs five years in a row. And so it, it created the culture that this is a winning town. Um, and so that was just amazing. Um, and then off the field, you know, I, I was I was just really blessed to be around um, uh, Dr. Greg Alex, you know, at the Matt Talbot Center. And he did he had the homeless shelter down there, um, you know, close to the Space Needle. And to be able to just see um, lives changed, you know, we uh, we threw my wife's 29th birthday party many moons ago, you know, what I mean? many moons ago. Uh, we threw a 29th birthday party and, and I had some of my celebrity friends come in, singers and actors. And, and, uh, and it was just really cool um, to see my friends feeding the homeless and then turn around and eating. And I remember asking uh, myself, like, all right, 
all right, I'm doing this for my wife. I know she loves it. She was always like, you know, she went to Seattle SPU. And so she was always like giving blankets to the homeless. And that was just her heart. I married a, a jewel of a lady, you know? And, uh, and so I knew that that was really what she wanted, but I was just asking myself like, all right. And I have my little guy talks like, guys, this really doing anything. And a homeless lady walked up to me and said, man, can I say something to you, Mr. Alexander? I said, yeah, sure. She said, I was just thinking, does anybody care about me anymore? And I saw this long line at, at the at the Talbot Center. And I said, hey, what's going on? They don't really give food out on a, on a Saturday like this. And I said, yeah, Sean was there throwing a party and he invited us. And she said, man, just for today, thank you for letting me feel like I'm special. And so it's those moments that, you know, I don't even remember me telling anybody about but I'm telling y'all now, they marked me when I was in Seattle, you know, 29 years old, just won the MVP. And I'm talking to a homeless lady that didn't feel special. And uh, so so those are the kind of moments in Seattle off the field that I just got to be a part of that that would just be, I'll, I'll it'll stick with me forever. Thank you. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you, man. Bob Condotta. <clears throat> Bob, you're muted. Oh, there, you got me now? Oh, there we go. Here. Yep. There, okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, congrats, Sean. And I had two quick questions for you. What, can you remind us of, of your family and, and just kind of the, the ages of your, of your kids and all of that? And then the other is... Uh, oh, you um, got me working here. Huh? Okay. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. What's the other one? Okay, and and the other is the um, um, do you ever marvel at the hundred touchdowns stat? I just it seems like with the way the game is played today, that's one of those. I mean, Marshawn has fifty eight, which is the next closest in Seahawks history. So you you almost have double what Marshawn had. Just with the way you guys played and what the game is today, that strikes me as one of those stats that might be really hard for anyone to ever come close to. Yeah. So uh, so um, so yeah. So uh, first one is is uh, so. My wife and I, we got married in, in 2002 and we had our first child in 2003. That's heaven. So heaven is uh, now 19 and she's the, uh, she's the oldest. So heaven, then Trinity is 17. She's a senior in high school. Aiden is 15. And then, uh, and then I was getting ready to retire. And then I decided to come babysit Clinton Porters with the Redskins. Long story, should have stayed home. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> so, but then right after I retired, we had um, we had my boys. Uh, Joseph is thirteen, and Justice is eleven. J U S T U S, and uh, and then uh, we thought, wow, okay, so maybe we get one more boy and we'll be done. <laughs> you know, uh, surprisingly, a year later, Temple, who is ten, uh, is our fourth girl, and uh, she's just amazing. Then Honor is uh, she turns nine in uh, in October twenty second, so she'll turn nine here in a little bit, and um, and then we thought, wow, okay. I said, Val, what do you think about kids? She's like, man, wouldn't four boys be awesome? I was like, okay, we're at two. Jedediah comes next, and he is the most alpha dude in every building that he walks into. So um, I'm sure you guys will tell which one he is when he when y'all see him uh, Sunday. <laughs> so so Jedi seven. So then we had Tora. Tora would be five now, and she passed after 70 days uh, of living. And uh, so she's in heaven, and uh, we still miss her. And then we have Eternity. Eternity's four, and then Hosanna is two. She's another dynamic personality. I would probably be holding her because she only listens to one person on this planet. <laughs> so, and then we had Baby Hope. Baby Hope uh, turned one August third, and so yeah. So that's that's my twelve. It's my twelve. So when we had her. We said we had the twelfth man. So sweetie, how you feel now? She's like ah. <laughs> so okay, well, well, we'll see what happens, you know. <laughs> and what was the other question? Oh, just the the 100 touchdowns that you scored. Just oh, that, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so the 100 touchdowns. You know, I I really feel like a lot of it's just goal setting. You know, like uh, I uh, I remember coming in and I looked at the record books and I thought, gosh, I feel like I'll score more touchdowns than any of these here. You know, and so that it became too small. So I said, okay, so if I score 10 touchdowns you know, what would it look like? And I'd say, okay, well, can I do 10 in 10 years? And then I, you know, I'm also trying to be reality. I'm like, I might not play 10 years. You know, that seems like it's hard, you know? And, and so then I said to go, okay, so what can I do in five years? 
And, uh, and so the goal was, could I score 12 to 14 touchdowns five years in a row? And so that was it, you know what I mean? And so, and so then I became, um, after the second year, I think it was Ricky that introduced me to Marshall Falk and he had scored 20. And then somebody through phone calls had introduced me to Emmett Smith. And they had said, yeah, someone's like, yeah, they're the only two guys that ever scored 20 touchdowns back to back years. And I was like, oh, that we're not leaving this. I'm not leaving without that, you know? And so that became the next goal. And so my, um, I think it was like my fifth and sixth year or fourth and fifth year, um, you know, that was the goal. Can I get 20 touchdowns? And, uh, and so, um, so I think it's really about goal setting. And then, um, I would tell Coach Hunger, like, hey, um, there'd be different packages he'd want to do. And I'd be like, hey, once we get inside the 20, um, you're the big show. And I want to tell you this, I'm not coming off the field. <laughs> you know, Ricky's like, you got to say it with your chest, you know. I'd be like, okay. And uh, and and Mike, um, as much as Mike like control everything, he liked that I took on little Ricky Waters persona and not getting off the field because I wanted the ball. And he... He'd be like, I'm going to give it to you once and you better do something with it, you know? And that became our thing. And I would, you know, if y'all see it, it would always be the first time I touch it, we'd score because I knew he was going to throw it after that. So, so, um, so it was goal setting, right time. You know, I do think it is a very hard goal to get to, especially um, because um, it's, it's easier to throw the ball in from the 25 in. And so you, you kind of see teams that can do that. And then you see, you know, um, some of the quarterbacks today, how athletic they are and how they, they can almost go back to old school where the quarterback did everything. So it makes it um, a little bit easier to run with the quarterback or run and throw it. And, um, and so the, the game's just changed just enough. But I think that, you know, you get the right formula, you'll get some guys there. I, I think, you know, like I said, the two guys and, and, and Derek Henry, you know, between those three guys, they are possible of scoring 20 touchdowns. And, uh, and I think that if you do that a couple of years in a row, you, you know, you, you literally can nip half of it in two years, but that's, they have to be stables and everybody has to be a part of that plan. All right. Two last ones for you, Sean uh, Brady. Hey, Sean, I'm uh, just wondering, did, did you have a connection to the DC area before you, you played out there? And uh, what about that area makes you um, want to make it your home? And then also just what is life like with such a full house with, with that many <laughs> kids? Uh, no, I knew nobody in DC. Um, you know, only people I knew was, was, was Stump and Jim Zorn. Cause they came over, you know, I was, I was really, um, I wanted to play a couple more years in Seattle and, uh, you know, and they, they decided not to. And so I was going to just retire and do what I was going to do try to impact the community in Seattle. And then, uh, Stump called and said, Hey, we've got a pretty good team. We just need to, we need a, we need a guy to come in and kind of help, help show them how to push it over the top. And so that was my role. I came in and I, it wasn't even about playing. It was about being the guy. And I think we were about seven and two, seven and three, and a bunch of guys got hurt. And so Jim and Stump pulled me in and was like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to sit you down the rest of the year or for till everybody gets healthy again. And those guys got hurt. And then some more guys came back and more guys got hurt. And, uh, and I just told him, I said, Hey, I know why y'all brought me here, but I want you to watch out. Like this could really unfold right in front of you all because they're not built the way we was in Seattle with the, with a healthy challenging, um, system. And it, and it wasn't. And so I think they ended like eight and eight and didn't make the playoffs. I'm like, and I remember talking to Jim afterwards and like, bro, he's like, how did you know? I was like, man, like, you know, it's hard to win in the NFL. You know what I mean? And so sometimes it's hard to win. It's hard to score touchdowns. And so sometimes you can take it for granted, but I was like, dude, y'all messed this up. <laughs> you know. Um, so after the season was over, I just kind of went through, do I want to move back to Seattle? Do I want to go to Alabama? Do I want to move back to Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky? And uh, my wife and I were just walking through the grocery store and, uh, and we were there like 30 minutes changing the recipes of what we we're going to make. And she said, man, when's the last time you've been in a store for 30 minutes and no one say anything to you? And it was 16 years old. And so I said, man, like, she goes, how's that feel? I was like, yeah. And so the thought was, maybe I should retire. And maybe it's a place for me to just kind of take a good deep breath for a little bit. And so, 
So that's, so it just fit, it, it fit me for that moment. And so, so that's how we picked out here. And uh, we've, we started our, 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 our story to have nine more children. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and our house, if you came and visited, I'm not inviting everybody, uh, but, uh, but if you came and visited, Jeff, you can come. Uh, uh, you would be amazed that um, people just fit, you know what I mean? And it, and you would come and be like, man, it's not really as loud as I thought it was going to be. Dinner time is going to be loud. We get that long wooden table and everybody, everybody has to come and sit at it. Um, but but uh, we kind of match the little girls, the middle girls, the younger girls, and the boys spot right in, slide in them. And, uh, and everybody just fits in. Like we, we give enough room for everybody to have to be themselves the same way. and it's a it's a lot of fun there's always a, a personality that's making things there's and uh girls are a lot you know uh, but, but i am definitely a girl dad and so and so so handling the emotions of the girls have been uh been just a wonderful experience um but um but yeah, but we, we allow people to free them to go be themselves, but they have to stay in the structure of, of the Alexander home and it just fits. Congrats again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, last question, Nico. Sean, a little off the field question. I, I see that you have the, the cover of Madden behind you. I, I'm just kind of curious, you know, over your career, what's the coolest piece of mem memorabilia that maybe you have, like, at your home that you think is, like, really cool? If maybe you were to go back to being that kid that wanted to be in the NFL, you know, now you had this amazing career. Like, what's something that maybe you hold dear or that is kind of cool out of the things you've collected over your time in the NFL? You know, I, I should take my computer and let you walk around like the basement. Uh, my wife did a, an amazing job of kind of turning into like the Alexander layer. And like, it's almost like a museum. Like you can see like the high school stuff on the USA, all American high school team and, and dumb balls. I have a couple touchdowns. I don't, I don't know how she got it all, but like I scored seven touchdowns in two, two different games and she called the school and got the, my brothers and all that and got the balls in here and let them in. And the next was all the Alabama stuff. And then the Seahawks stuff, the Seahawks stuff, they, it's all over the, it's, it's really cool. But the trophy wall, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's, corner that yes. <laughs> and so so that trophy is uh it's always cool and then uh, they'll come in and you know they'll come work on the house for something and they'll walk down the steps and they'll be like wait you're Sean Alexander and I'm like oh yeah how you doing like oh yeah we just okay. thought you were just Mr. Alexander the farmer I'm like yeah that's kind of who I am too you know and so uh, and so um so the MVP trophy um it's a uh, it's just a lot because it, it so the hard work that you have to put in and then also how like per you to get that award um and uh you know and that reminds me of the Super Bowl and Having our, we had our second daughter, so I was late to train her, and uh, so we had Trinity that year. She's the MVP baby, and uh, and so um, so that that trophy is 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 still pretty sweet. Well, I have time for the tours. Up to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's live. It's live. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us, Sean. Congratulations again, and uh, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Sean. Thank thanks, you, Sean. Sean. It's great. I'll see all you all Sunday. Chris, what's up, man? What's up, Sean? <laughs> see you guys. Yeah, man. Bye. See you, man.